and welcome to Ukraine Today. I'm Valero Solohub. Join me now to discuss the information war Ukraine is currently fighting. Its first Deputy Minister for Information Policy, Ms. Emine Japar. Ms. Emine, uh, welcome to Ukraine Today. Thank you. So, uh, Ms. Emine, um, everybody is talking about the um, information war and how important it is right now. Uh, and some people say that it's even more important than the actual combat which is happening in, in eastern Ukraine. And um, your ministry is vested with the task of uh, securing the information um, security of Ukraine mm -hmm. and um, countering Russia pro Russian propaganda. So, how are things going on with your ministry right now? It's not an issue of countering. Of the, of the Russian propaganda, I want to uh, I want to understand one simple issue is that this is a battle of uh, non-equal possibilities. So it's the same if you're boxing with a man who is much taller and much uh, kind of with a, with, a di with a different weight. So which means that Russia like if you were boxing with Mayor Klitschko, uh, yes, something like this. Uh, and we understand that uh, we have different uh, resources in terms of financing, in terms of uh, principles because Russia is a militaristic state. They have um, um, a strong and censorship within the country. So what do they do? They even try to regulate the internet field, which is not, uh, um, which we not do. And this is something of a principle for our ministry, not to regulate neither the broadcasting nor the internet resources. Because if we claim that we have a freedom of speech, a freedom of expression, so we cannot do this. That is why uh, we are on purpose not going there. So what, what are the priorities for your ministry? What are the main tasks you see in securing information uh, uh, there are several tasks actually uh, one of these is to work out legislature about what's what is it media what kind of media we have what is it informational security or information security so just to put definitions in the legislative field of your why do you need that just because uh, in order to have a proper um, response for all those uh, information propaganda war and uh, in order to uh, form that um, definitions, because it's very important in terms of, again, um, relations with uh, government and media and, and etc. But aren't you supposed to be fighting in this information war instead of uh, passing legislation which would be defining definitions? It's not only about definitions. I, you just uh, let me continue with all those what we're doing. Another issue is that we're trying to put, there are several priorities. One of those is uh, reintegration, information reintegration of occupied territories, which is Donbass and Crimea. Another one is embedded journalism. It's a possibility for international journalists to broadcast and to cover the events uh, on the occupied territory on the east of the country because it's different with Crimea. So we also have some legislations that are uh, on the process of uh, uh, working out and we're also trying to work out a concept of, of information security so this concept actually provides with definitions because without these definitions you cannot uh, even understand what media for example is what is it international uh, information security without uh, not understanding this and without these definitions you cannot move on actually uh, in this you know legislation issue but what about what about some some projects which your ministry is working working on to actually uh, fight the, the Russian propaganda which is being staged against Ukraine because we just we just saw the the, the example with the Dutch referendum for for, for example uh, the Russian propaganda was was so strong that basically the Dutch citizens most of whom did not have a clue what's going on they went there and they voted against the ratification of the uh, EU association agreement with with Ukraine so did ministry do something to to counter that the issue is that the Ministry of Foreign, uh, of Foreign Affairs was responsible for the referendum issue and they were also having uh, a huge information campaign towards consolidation of uh, Dutch society opinion on Ukraine. But as far as I understand, understand that issue is that even if we had uh, millions of dollars put in that campaign, Dutch people would not uh, vote for Ukrainian uh, association with the European Union. Uh, that's another story. What I 
I understand in this case is that this is the first case for Ukraine when we had this kind of large-scale campaign that consolidated uh, government and also we th this was actually a unique uh, example and it gave us an experience of doing well, that. Well, it looks like, looks like Russia, looks like Russia is, is, is staging this information campaign using the Dutch topic ever since the MH17 was, was, was brought down and uh, moreover uh, following the, the issue of the uh, official uh, report uh, about the, the, the cause of the crash which concluded that the crash was caused by the, um, the, the impact of uh, surface to, to, to air missile in, ever since and it's been almost two years now Russia is trying to convince the, the European uh, population the, the, the Dutch people who suffered the most in this horrific tragedy that it's not so so clear that it's not the um, the, the Russian-backed militants who are responsible, but there are other theories. So, is there something which the ministry is doing to counter that on the international arena? We, um, as far the response about Russia-Ukraine uh, information battle I gave at the very beginning of the interview. So this is something, uh, this is a battle of uh, non-equal possibilities. We don't have this kind of resource and uh, as I told you, that Russia really influences uh, international information field, not only in Russia, but also abroad. Well, obviously, you don't need much money to open a website and counter that. And it's an issue of huge money, actually. And today, it's absolutely uh, artificial. You can influence that. With our ministry, we didn't do it with the, uh, with the referendum in the uh, Netherlands, but uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs did it. And as I told you, it was a huge experience for the whole country within this uh, information campaign. What we do, for example, with Crimea, it's that we understand that today um, we somehow, so there are two uh, priorities with Crimea. It's just the uh, development of the Ukrainian broadcasting. So we're planning to build up a um, tower uh, in, in Chongar, which is uh, the Kherson region. Uh, it, it, it would be 150 meters tall and we could uh, put some transmitters to cover the territory of Crimea. Of course, we do understand that we cannot cover the whole Crimea because... Uh, when do you plan to do that? So we have an investor. We found out uh, we found an investor who is uh, ready to uh, build it up uh, within half a year. And the, today it's actually on the process. So the Herson Oblast and the administration of Herson is looking for the uh, land plot to put uh, for this investor to build up this tower. Once this tower is in place, Mr. Chapar, um, how many viewers or households do you plan to cover with, the, with this broadcast? It depends, it depends on a transmitter that would be put uh, on the tower and it also depends on what kind of media would be uh, applied for the contest because it's an issue of there is a national council for TV broadcasting that gives the uh, frequency for the radio, let's say. So what we say is that uh, with the television it's not possible to cover the TV broadcasting, like analog broadcasting, because it was shut down in March 2014. And we're trying to uh, restore the radio broadcasting. Today we have a, a good example of uh, coordination with the Ukrainian radio, with the uh, Radio Liberty and the Ministry of Foreign Information. We launched um, an everyday radio program, uh, Krim Reali, that broadcasts on the uh, middle waves um, daily couple of hours so it covers about 70 percent of the Crimean territory and we do have uh, not viewers but uh, those who who listen to that radio yeah. mr. Paul can we go back to this very interesting project of um, installing a uh, tower to broadcast Ukrainian channels uh, to the Crimea uh, are you concerned that the Russians might might do everything possible to, to block the signal. Jam, yes, of course, we are, we, do, we are concerned, but it doesn't mean that we have to be, uh, we don't have to act in this case. Uh, the issue with... But is the technology, but is the ideally, technology which you, you ideally, will be using? Ideally, with Crimea, we have to put a 400 meter uh, tower to cover the whole territory of Crimea, but it, it costs about 80 million dollars, which is really not possible 
uh, for us to build up that tower. And we do not have any kind of investor to build up this kind of tower. And we do not have uh, other countries, let's say, with assistance uh, to build up this tower again. So we are uh, taking into consideration all those conditions that are here in Ukraine. So there is an investor and we are trying to uh, help him. Okay, but the question again is once, once this tower is in place, are you confident that the technology which you will be using will not be jammed? Because if it's jammed, all the money which was spent to build this tower will be wasted. That's, that's an issue of investor. It doesn't mean that uh, this issue would stop him uh, from that building because... Isn't it your issue? Well, shouldn't you be concerned it that... Our, it was our initiative, so it was our offer. He, uh, he stick to that actually, but it doesn't mean that uh, because uh, this project is actually a combination of interest of private sector and state interest because it's for this investor it's not only an issue of broadcasting for Crimea, it's Kherson Oblast. So it means that the Ukrainian broadcasting will be forced there. So it will be more intensified in Kherson because it is also an issue of Russian propaganda there and we have some Russian channels actively uh, broadcasting in Kherson. So for him it's an issue of business again and possibility of broadcasting for Kherson. For us it's an issue of putting some strong transmitters and to cover let's say 100 uh, kilometers uh, for Crimea. We don't know what Russia is going to do because uh, it's unpredictable. Well, I can tell you, they'll, be, they'll try to jam it. <laughs> that's, that's logical. But it doesn't mean that in this case we just have to sit down and do nothing. So we found this kind of positive case, so let's just continue doing it. Mitchell, can we talk about, again, in, in the same context about the, uh, the Donbass region, the, the territories which are not under control of the Ukrainian government, where the um, Ukraine broadcast is, is, is being cut off? Is something being done, not only about the Crimea, but also about these territories? As far as I know that the f uh, approximately 45 transmitters were put on the perimeter of uh, the occupied territory, uh, I can't tell you for sure uh, how successful it, for, it, it is because that's, with, in my understanding, uh, the issue of information is that again uh, a choice of you or me as a viewer. For example, if you love Russia, let's say, and you have satellite, and everyone, almost everyone has a satellite, and you have a chance to watch, even if you have an alternative or Ukrainian television, you have a chance to watch Russian one. So you just switch on your television and watch Russian channels. And we have this case in Kherson, let's say, because people, they do choose to watch Russian television. So we're trying to restore the Ukrainian broadcasting and we have some, uh, like let's say 45 transmitters, uh, um, due to assistance of uh, let's say Poland, uh, Baltic states, which are uh, broadcasting on a digital television and they do not need these kind of transmitters anymore. So they just uh, provide with those transmitters uh, the Ukrainian site and we're putting there on Donbass region. Well, apart from um, the, the project of installing the, uh, the tower to transmit um, Ukraine broadcasts into Crimea, is there anything else the minister is doing to help the Crimeans uh, to get information about what's going on from the Ukrainian side? Yes, uh, with Crimea it's something that is really active. So we have understanding that we do not control the territory and the Ukrainian television is not there anymore and all of the towers are controlled by Russian Federation. So what we do is we have uh, information campaigns. The first one uh, is Crimea is Ukrainian information campaign. So it's uh, an annual campaign that provides uh, and the aim of that campaign is consolidate the social opinion of Ukrainians because approximately 40% of Ukrainians, they do think that in Crimea, uh, all the inhabitants of the peninsula are separatists, let's say, and they say, oh, why do we need that territory? We don't need it anymore. And let's, let's say uh, it's okay for Ukraine to be without Crimea. So what we say in this campaign is that uh, democratic Ukraine, European Ukraine is not possible and cannot be as a state, uh, an integral state without Crimea. We had a board campaign, we had television uh, video clips, TV video clips when, let's say, uh, prominent Ukrainian uh, newsmakers were giving messages not only for Ukrainians but all those for those Ukrainians who left in Crimea, mostly Crimean Tatars, who do still wait for some actions from Ukraine to get this territory back. Do you believe it's possible to return the Crimea yes, I do. merely with the information 
campaign? No, uh, it's not an issue. It's not the competence of information to take this territory back. When but it was information, but it was no, information no, which made people go, not. go the to the The territory was occupied referendum. by the military service of another state, which means that you can do whatever you could do with information, but you cannot take the territory back with information. And I think it's evident, and I'm actually surprised to hear this kind of uh, question from you, claiming that it's possible to get the territory with this information issue. Yeah. Well, the question was whether you believe it's possible to no, re regain it. I think it. that um, it's an issue of ideas, of minds, of shaping people's minds. And what we do with these campaigns, we're trying to shape people's minds. First of all, Ukrainian people's mind, like that we're trying to make them believe that it's not possible for Ukraine to be without Crimea. Yeah, it looks like some uh, a lot of complex issues there and uh, a lot of work uh, in the information area to do for the ministry. Uh, Ms. Japar, many thanks for finding the time to come and talk to us. We were discussing the issue of information war, information campaign. Ukraine is currently fighting with the first deputy minister for information policy, Ms. Emine Japar. I'm Volodymyr Solhub. Thank you for watching Ukraine Today.